Welcome to episode 18. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Ron Trebendis, owner of Performance Medicine and Sports Therapy. Dr. Trebendis is an injury recovery and sports performance specialist. In his spare time, he is also a 20-time Ironman finisher and host of the Recover With Purpose podcast. Hi, Ron. How are you hey, today? How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I have to admit, this is a my first time being on the other side of the microphone. Oh, so, is it really? Yes. And I have to say, I feel like it's going to be a lot easier this way than okay. the other way. Uh, I don't have to prep as much, you know? Yeah. But it's, uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. So I don't know if you know this or not, but you were the very first chiropractor that I ever went to. And it was Amy Manuel told mm -hmm. me to go see you because I was having issues with my shoulder. I was just swimming a ton during my triathloning days and everything. And I was going to go see a, an ortho because I was like, that was all I knew. And she was like, no, you have to go see Ron because he is magic and he will like make you be able to swim again. And so it was my first adjustment ever after he did some ART. It was my first adjustment ever. And I walked out like six feet taller and just felt amazing. And I have been sold on chiropractic care ever since. Well, I, well, I appreciate that. That's awesome. You made it pretty easy though. Oh, well, thank good, you. Good patient. Good patient. Oh, well, thank you. So, yes. All right. So question for you that we always like yes. to start off with all of our guests is what are you loving right now? So you went right to that one. That's yeah. where you go. That's the one we were talking about. You're like, oh, I'm not even going to hold off on this one. You want to know no. what I'm loving? Right we're just going to like dive right in. Okay. So there is three things that I developed like a business relationship with this year from a recovery side of things. Cause that's, that's what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. I'm all about, and even when we talk about chiropractic and that kind of thing that fits into recovery. Right. And so I'm looking at it from a big a global aspect. Right. And so these three products that, you know, I've developed a relationship with to help people recover. Um, the one is hyper ice. Okay. okay. Hyper, -Ice, hyper ice is a company that sells the, you know, they sell the vibrating foam rollers. They sell the vibrating balls. They sell those vibrating guns, you know, those massage guns that you're seeing now a lot of, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just an amazing. They have high quality products. Um, we sell them at all of our locations. And it's just the ability to be able to mobilize soft tissue with these products and just add to your recovery routine. And they're at a price point to where you could, you could afford them. You know, you could afford them and then they are durable and hold up, right? Um, the reason why they're putting so much technology into a lot of their vibrating products and percussion type products is they're actually doing studies on it that show that it ties into the frequency of their soft tissue and the fascia in the body, right? So their guns, for example, I don't know if you know your listeners out there are seeing these kind of things. There's these, you know, on Instagram all the time, these massage guns kind of thing. Well, they developed one that really has different three speeds on it that really kind of jives with the body. Basically, like it's not that's just massage, it's percussion, right? The soft tissues below are, are it's affecting tissues very deep and basically bringing blood to the area for proper warm up, proper cool down, and proper recovery needs. So I'd say Hyper Ice, if you guys go out there and check out their website, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's what I'm loving right now. I'm loving all their products. So I've been demoing it. They make, I, I mean, I'm not even giving a commercial for them here, but they make uh, shoulder wraps for ice. You know, they make the knee wraps for ice. They make it very, very user friendly. Um, their products are great. And so, you know, go out and check that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I've been demoing a ton of their things right now and I'm just loving their product line. Awesome. Very cool. So hyper, just as, just as it sounds, hyper, hyper ice. ice. Yes. Okay. Hyperice.com. Yeah. Okay. Go check, check them out though. They're all over Instagram. They do a lot of good stuff. Give a lot of good quality content out there too. So go follow them on Instagram. Cool. Okay. What else? You said there oh, were three. What else? I said three things. Okay. Um, so rapid reboot, which is a compression, that's a compression boot. Um, you know, like Norma Tech, you've heard of Norma Tech, but rapid reboot's a new company. I like their product just a little bit better. Um, it's just a little more user friendly, a little more intuitive. It has a couple of different settings on it that I, I prefer. Uh, so that's the compression units that I'm using. And for those of you who don't know that what pneumatic compression is, is the same kind of thing after a hard workout. Um, you're squeezing blood out of your legs, trying to get it back to your heart and trying to recover properly. Uh, so that's, that's two. Mm -hmm. So rapid reboot, you can check them out. Their, their websites, same thing. Rapid, I think it's rapid hyphen reboot.com. Uh, you can check that out. And the other one, I just had him in the office actually today. He came to visit as the CEO of Firefly. 
So Firefly is a cool, um, it's almost like a mini TENS unit and it gets put on your peroneal nerve down in your lower leg, okay? In Europe, this is where this guy kind of came up with it. Over in Europe, they use this post-surgical to prevent clots, DVTs, and, and things like that. And so they're disposable. So you throw them on for four hours, it stimulates the peroneal nerve, which controlling a lot of the muscles in your lower leg and increases circulation back to the heart. And by doing this, they've done studies on it that show, just to give, I don't want to bore people with statistics, but walking around gives you 65% of your venous return back to your heart. So say recovering, you're all about circulation and recovery. 65% from walking around. Traditional compression boots, like I just mentioned, Rapid Reboot, Normatec, all those kind of vasopneumatic devices, give you about 22 to 25% return. Um, this unit gives you about 35%. And oh, wow. the cool thing about it is you slap them on, you have jeans on, nobody knows you, nobody knows you have a, them on, right? You can travel with them. So I know that when I was racing, if I did a long race, tore up my legs, and then the flight back is, you know, five, six hours, my legs would be swollen, you know? And so this is going to keep you fresher going to events, going to races, different kinds of things. The interesting part is that in our clinic and our PT and our post-surgical patients, we've been using it for ankle sprains. After knee surgery, pretty much our protocol is to give everybody a Firefly because we want to increase circulation. Remember, I did a podcast with the CEO of Firefly, um, and we ended the podcast with said circulation is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys remember anything out there, is that anytime you can increase circulation, it's going to be good. So all three of these products do just that, right? Um, and that's what I'm into, you know, is the, the more we can recover the more we can increase circulation the more we can pump out all that trash that's in your legs and in your body the quicker you're going to recover the quicker you can come back to training and the quicker you can perform at peak levels now who would use the firefly like is it pretty much just everybody like you could use everybody, it before yeah. I mean, I had, exactly like i had um so let's use it for example i'll tell you my story with it but like i had a guy that just does european travel back and forth. He always has swollen legs. He's an average, not even an athlete, just gets swelling in his legs. He, he buys packs of them and he just wears them on all transcontinental flights. Um, pilots, they mm -hmm. use them, right? Um, Anthony was just telling me today, he's in, he's pretty much in every athletic training room right now because what he didn't expect is the using them for injury. He thought they were only going to be for recovery, but what they're finding is that like, say you have a brand new freshly ankle sprain, right? This could stimulate that that lower leg to flush out all that junk that's built up from rolling your ankle and your recovery time is two or three days more, you know, two or three days shortened, I should say. Okay. Uh, the other example is when you have an ACL tear, you're going to bleed into the gutters is what it's called is it's when you swelling, you know, from the injury goes down into your ankle, it's going to go to where gravity is and it's going to pull. Um, by putting this on at post-surgical, it's going to help get all that junk out of there. Um, you know, so people like that, I mean, we've even put it on somebody that's had ankle surgery and has a cast on. So, you know, when you have a cast on, you don't use those muscles, you get, you get atrophy. And you can, this, the one gymnast was wearing them all night long. She was wearing it, like had a cast on, was wearing it on her, on her leg all night. And it was stimulating those muscles and keeping her from breaking down so much so that when she got the cast off, she was ready to start PT and ready to get into it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's for everybody. My story with it was, is I blew the guy off for about three months. And then he jokes around about this and I went out for a run and I tweaked my calf and I said, oh, what's this box he sent me? I was like, yeah, eh, I'll try it. Mm -hmm. And so I threw it on and then went and did errands for the day. And I had it on for about three hours and I took it off and I go, oh my gosh, like you could sizably, and I only, you're supposed to wear it on both legs, but I had to tweak calf. Of course, I'm going to try to cut corners, wore it on the one that was injured. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was sizably like less swelling in my calf. Like it was more pliable. The tissue was healthier. I was like, wow, my one calf feels so good. And I immediately put it on my other one. So then I had to call and apologize. I go, Hey man, <laughs> sorry. He's like, he's like, dude, you're not the first person. He's like, you trust me. I get blown off on a daily basis. But once people realize that it could be used for so many different things, it's really a high quality product. And when we're at our office trying to put together products that we're selling, I just don't sell anything. Like mm -hmm. I want my products, and again, it comes back to what I believe in and it's recover with purpose. Everything that you do in recovery and in injury and everything, you should have a purpose because we're not about wasting time. And the athletes that I deal with are on a huge time crunch, usually to either perform or just get back to their daily lives. You know, they're active. So 
that is when I pick products to use. That's the biggest thing I think to myself. I'm like, what purpose does that have in my office? What purpose does that have to my clients or my patients or whoever? And so when by picking, by working with these three companies, I pretty much have all the bases covered when it comes to uh, recovery techniques, recovery products, and they all do something different because this, what works for somebody is not going to work for somebody else. So you mm-hmm. have to find your correct recovery tool and plan. I love that. So one of my questions for you, and you, t- you just touched on it a little bit, the name of your business, Recover With Purpose. So, so the name of our company is Performance, uh, oh, just sorry. Performance Medicine and Sports Therapy. So that's how it started. Okay. And so our tagline is kind of Recover With Purpose. And that's what we named our podcast after, because that's the belief is that when you come into our facilities, it's with a purpose, right? We're not going to do that thing where we try to get you to every provider we have and you go through this cattle call arrangement. We just don't do that. And mm-hmm. that's not something I believe in. So that's when that tagline was born. Got it. Yeah, that makes total sense. So, you know, it seems very intentional and it's definitely like a part of your why. Right. Oh, without a doubt. There you go. Simon Sinek, call it yeah. out. There mm-hmm. it is. Give a shout out to that book, right? Yes, exactly. That's my once a year reads. It's, it's a such good a one. good one. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, that definitely speaks to my, to my why, because I, I believe that in the medical field, you can just get jaded with insurance companies and a lot of this other stuff. And we had to make something that um, was different, but the outcomes for our patients were, were so much more improved and just make the whole experience better for people. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where it all came about. I love it. And something else that is different or that I've noticed since it's been a while since I live in Colorado now and you're in Texas. Uh, yeah, look, it's going to be 103 here tomorrow, by the way. Dude, that's ridiculous. 103. Okay. And then I think the foreseeable, it's a time where the meteorologist just goes, you know, I'm going to take the month off. It's just going to be sunny and hot. So <laughs> that's it. So brutal. That's exactly. I think so it hit here. Yeah, it's here. don't even start. I don't even want to hear about yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's so hot. <laughs> time when everybody in Texas just gets irritated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'll be there in a couple of weeks for Amy's wedding, actually. So There it I'll is. Get, I'll get to experience it. Very good. For sure. But, you know, I've noticed just watching you, following you guys on Instagram and everything, that you have added a ton of new services and I don't know what else you would call them to your lineup. Cause I think when I was going to see you, you maybe had the cryo, Mm -hmm. you were there. And then I went and saw a massage therapist as well. But now it seems like you offer all the things. So you could go into that just a little bit more about what you're offering and why you expanded the services. The biggest thing is I just thought every medical profession was lacking continuity of care, being able to take a patient from the time that they get hurt, and follow them through and keeping your ego checked at the door. And I wanted to create that in one system. And so my partner and I, um, Kip, we, we kind of came up with, okay, well, what, is that, what does that entail? What does that mean? I, I don't want to be just a chiropractor because I don't believe in just running people through and adjusting somebody and sending them out the door. So how can we add highly talented people in one system that actually communicate? Because what you find out there is that you'll say people are – you know, we have a multidisciplinary clinic, but everybody there has their own ego, their own agenda, and they don't really pass patients around and get the best for their patient. They still feel like they can control everything. And that's, that's where they go wrong, right? They might be under one roof, but they're not a system. And so that was my biggest thing is, okay, how can we, how can we develop a system that takes the strengths of a chiropractor, the strengths of a medical doctor, the strengths of a PT, the strengths of a massage therapist, the strengths of being able to communicate with our orthos and our outside referral system that gels it all together so that the patient, all they have to do is worry about getting better. They don't have to worry about where do I go? What do I do? Who do I see? What goes on? And being able to navigate that system is confusing sometimes. So I like to say that when somebody comes to me first, I'm the quarterback of the situation. Sometimes you come to see me and listen, you are so messed up and, and can't move. I can't do my job. I'm like, my medical doctor's here. You do need some medication. You need some anti-inflammatories. You need something to calm down. That's just knowing your role and knowing how to give the best quality of service to that patient. You know, one of my coolest things is when people come to me, I had a patient the other day that said, oh man, man, I'm feeling great. Hey, do you care if I see my chiropractor? He's a really cool guy. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. You can go back to him. They didn't even know I was a chiropractor. 
chiropractor, which that speaks a lot to me because that's what I'm going for. I just want to be, I just want to help you and try to find what we have going on. Right. And so that was the, the birth of having all this under one roof. You know, again, it's with purpose. Every profession that we have under our roof, every recovery modality has a purpose. And we try to get that patient when they come in to be able to get well as fast as possible. And that's the way to do it. You know, um, my biggest frustration is when you see a chiropractor or any, but any profession for that matter, hang on to a patient and just string them along for a ton of office visits. And then right when their insurance stops paying, they're like, Oh yeah, you might want to go get an MRI like that. That's not right. You know? And so we found that that was, was what was broken with the system. And you know, we're still, we're still navigating it and figuring it all out, but um, we're doing a pretty good job now and we're getting some great outcomes with it. And we have a good team of providers that, really know how to just check their ego out the door and not about I, it's about the team, you know? Um, so that's kind of where we're at. I love that. Yeah. It just seems like it'd be so much easier not having to deal with referrals and mm -hmm. I have to go to this office and then that office. Correct. And Correct. And it's even, even to the point when somebody does have to go outsource for a referral um, or an x-ray or an MRI, it's, we have a system in place at the front desk that tracks that person, like walks them through it. You know, and we have relationships with certain orthos that we use and certain pain management docs that we use. And it keeps that continuity of care, meaning that we're always in track. We always have a tracker on you. We always know where you're going. You're never going to be stagnant. Like, oh, I, I don't know what to do with you. So I'm sending you off here. That, that was frustrating to me. And the patient just gets put through the cracks, slips through the cracks, never ends up getting well or gets somewhat well, but not all the way better, you know, from start to finish. And that was kind of the thing is, hey, be that Yoda that walks Luke Skywalker from start to finish on the on their injury, you know? Um, and so that's what we've been working towards. It's a it, it's work in progress. We're still learning as we go along, you know, but it's uh it's coming together really nice. So I love all that. So since you work with so many different athletes, like types of athletes, and mm -hmm. I mean, you have, you know, like so many different patients, where do you find that athletes are most failing themselves? Like um, what is leading them to your office? A lack of a plan. Like that's really what I see. I mean, I see that in the NFL training room all the time. I mean, the guys from like, I just using those guys as, as an example. Um, they come to us because the teams care about the business. They don't really care about the individual. And so they just kind of go through the system. They don't really have a game plan. You know, there's no, there's no thought put into their care, right? It's usually the same old cattle call kind of thing, right? And so the thing lacking most in most athletes care is just coming up with a game plan. So you can even take that to a triathlete, right? I, I give a lecture sometimes and I'm like, you got to find your team, right? You got to find your team. Don't wait until something comes up and then try to go search for somebody. Like at the beginning of a season, if you're planning, I don't know, even your nutrition, right? You have a triathlete. They need to have their nutrition dialed in for the year. Who are you going to talk to for that? You have your coach that's developing your workouts. Who are you going to talk to that for that? If your body breaks down, who are you going to go to? You know, even getting a cardiac test every year before the season starts, have a relationship with a cardiologist. Like, relationships that's what they don't have and they don't know where to go or who to go and if I could be a part of just being that quarterback that even if it's I'm not the person to fix you if at least if I can get you in that direction that's what I'm all about mm -hmm. um, so that I would say disorganized recovery plans meaning that they're like oh I tried cryo all right I did it once but there's no rhyme or reason to it. So when I was coaching triathlete, triathlete, triathletes, I don't anymore, but I used to, in their program, I used to schedule their massages because they, you know, the type A athlete doesn't want to take time off. So I would incorporate it and say, listen, this is part of your training. So it's an hour of training. You can log it if you want, if you want to be <laughs> you like to log it. Like counts as an hour of training. Oh, well, no, but I would log it in there. Mm -hmm. And it's about, and that's part of my job too, is going, okay, take an athlete and go, what are your needs? Like after a football game on Sunday, you should probably, you're going to cryo on Monday because it's a down day. Then you might get a massage later in the week. Then you might see some body work, some prep work before the next week's game. And so every athlete, every injury is treated different. There's no cookie cutter approach to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so it all comes down, like I said, first is the plan. They're missing a plan on what to do, you know? So 
I hope that answers your question. It wasn't that specific. It's pretty general, mm -hmm. but I think if you break it down to that, I mean, it's your recovery plan. It's what happens when you get injured and those kind of things that you got to look at. So any athlete planning a season, an Ironman, I just kind of go back to, you should have, it's not just swim, bike and run, you know, nutrition is more important than half of those things. You know, sometimes it's, it's what you eat is more important than that run you did that day. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the extra hour of sleep is more important than adding an extra hour of running. That extra massage is better than that extra hour of cycling, but it's hard mentally for them to wrap their heads around that kind of stuff. And that's where we have to be better at educating them and going, no, this is going to make you perform better. You have to just add it. I love it that you would actually put the hour massage oh, on someone's schedule. It's a good tip for coaches out there. Any coaches listening, like mm -hmm. you have to be, they're not going to do it. Like, cause yeah. they're type A, they're just like, like, oh, I forgot. I did this. I would have. And so I would almost say, okay, you're going to have a massage on this Thursday at this time. Cause you've given me that your availability that you can do that. Mm -hmm. So go to wherever you're going to go. Even the coaches that I was, or clients that I had out of town, I'm like, go set up your massage schedule for the next six weeks, do six weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, just go do it. And I would, I would walk them through it and then I would add it to their schedule. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is so. such a great tip because mm -hmm. I mean, as an athlete or former, you know, triathloner and everything, mm -hmm. I would, I wouldn't do it until I got injured. And then it was like, oh, okay. Now I see the right. value. Yeah. And it's too late this. then because then, you're, then yeah. you're behind, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hindsight there. So note mm -hmm. for all the coaches, put that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can be proactive and help your athlete the same way that they can be proactive about that kind of stuff too. Just start, you know, they're paying you to babysit them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm like, you know, do 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 a good job babysitting the recovery too. Yeah, for sure. Now, talking a little bit more, you mentioned sleep on mm -hmm. there as well as part of the plan and everything. Like in your practice, how important is sleep? And oh. you talk to your clients or your patients, sorry. Do you talk to your patients about the importance of sleep? Yeah. I mean, I tell people that if they want the best recovery tips, I'm like, some of the best recovery tips are free. Like, you don't even need to come see me if you haven't done these things first. You want to try cryo, you want this, you want that. Get an extra hour of sleep at night and drink more water. Mm -hmm. You do those. If you can't do those two things, then you're, why, why are you going to start trying to do other stuff? Like, those are the two simplest things you can do for free. Yeah. Um, probably my two best recovery tips that I come back to nonstop is, I, I mean, sleep, more water. I mean, you can do those things. You're going to be feeling a lot better. Yeah, for so, yeah, sure. I talk, I preach it all the time. I'm always preaching. I mean, you, you can even take, go science on recovery and hydration. I mean, that's why we've added, we have IV therapy here too, is that if you think about beef jerky, you know what beef jerky is, it's dehydrated meat, right? And so scar tissue, um, overuse injuries is dehydrated meat. And so most, I believe that a lot of overuse injuries come because you were in a dehydrate, dehydrated state anyway, your body is dehydrating. It's turning into beef jerky. And if you overuse beef jerky, you've, you've bitten into a bad piece of steak before. It's, it's not good. It's grizzle. It's gross. And that's what happens to your tissues. And that causes, you know, it's a, it's a bad, I guess, deoxygenated area of the blood, which then leads to a lot of inflammation. I am 100% so, yeah. going to use that analogy. That yeah. is amazing. It's gross, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. one I've used a long time. So, um, but that's, that's the importance of it. If you go back to every ailment in the body is an inflammatory condition. And mm -hmm. if your body's in a state of inflammation chronically, it's going to break down and it breaks down with tissues. It, it's going to show itself some way. So again, the number one recovery tip, Hey, water and then sleep more. Because cortisol, love, I don't want to get into a whole cortisol discussion, but you don't sleep a lot. Stress happens, cortisol, fatigue, all that kind of stuff happens too. So yeah. those two things, you'd be, you'd be doing better. And see, that's free. Yeah. You're going to put yourself out of business with I, all those tips. Some won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> they won't listen. But no, some will. And that's, this is who I'm talking to, the people that will. Yeah, especially the sleep component of it. I mean, I feel like we just live in a society where people value just being so busy and, oh, I can thrive on four or five hours of sleep. Like, you know, like a pride, sleep. like, oh, like grinding, 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 you know, especially some of these entrepreneurs, they're like, oh, showing pictures of their watch at 3 a.m. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you don't have to show us that you're up early. We get it. You know, um, or up late. You know, yeah, it, it doesn't need to be like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, biggest tip I used to give, you know, tapering for a race or tapering for an event, 
you know, I always used to say, start paying attention. You should be paying attention to all this stuff throughout your training cycle. But the number one thing in a taper is get an, I would get an extra hour of sleep a night because that's going to prep you for the race or a race or event more than any kind of training you can do in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that was my, I mean, I remember I write that on everybody's schedule. I'm like, Hey, sleep in, go to bed an extra, go to bed an hour, early, go to bed an hour early. And so that was huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like if you put that on triathlete schedules, they're going to follow oh, it. They're yeah, so type you, A. You so. got to just, you got to appeal to what, who you're dealing with, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, if you put that on their schedule and then they have to show that they didn't do it, they freak out. They're right. just like, I need to do everything on here. <laughs> and that's, that's how it is. And most athletes are like that. So that comes down to anybody participating at anything at a high level. I see that with the football players, you know, when we're doing little competitions that like mobility competitions or ball toss competitions or anything like that, you know, they're always like, oh, so-and-so threw it further than me. Oh, wait a minute. I got to work on this. You know, everybody. <laughs> There, it's all about competition. And if you can make it fun, but you can make recovery about competition and Hey, you know, it, you're going to, you're going to get your point across and they're going to actually follow through with the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People like to see all green on their training peaks. Exactly. Exactly. All green, all green, no red, no yellow. Yellow is like, Oh, I'm going to go yeah. walk around the block for a minute just so I can, <laughs> that, so I can turn that green. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> there. So Ron, outside of sleeping and drinking more water, what other, what, I guess, like at home tip would you have for an athlete to really just help to stay like injury free, I guess you'd say? You know, it's probably a loaded question, but if I had to say the best bang for your buck, like as far as what would give you the most benefit, I mean, I can, there's a lot of things on my mind right now, but keeping your tissues mobilized. So foam roll, hyper ice has a ton of that kind of stuff. The guns, like I just find, you know, some people, it goes back and forth. There's debate over foam rolling and that kind of thing. If it's even beneficial, if it's this and that, I could tell you, I do it every night and I feel better. So I don't care what science says or if it's mm -hmm. fixing anything, I don't care. I, I feel better when I foam roll every night, I wake up, I'm more refreshed. And I have a feeling that again, we go back to what we originally talked about. Blood flow is good. If we are rolling out and we're getting blood flow in our lower extremities and breaking up some of that junk from the day, I think you're going to feel a lot better. You mm -hmm. know, um, that, that too. Um, I mean that the other thing too, is just a little more mental is I know this is, this is weird, but I, every night showering before bed, I don't care if you need it or you don't washing the day away. Like okay. that helps with recovery. I feel like I feel better every time that I do that. Even if I don't need a shower, just showering before bed and refreshing and, and washing the day away, shower, foam roll, big glass of water and go to bed. That's usually. So kind of, I guess it would be a reset before you yeah, go to bed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It does that. I found out that I was doing that just because allergies down here are pretty bad. And I was like always just trying to get all that pollen off of me and just felt gross at the end of the day. But then I found that I got in a habit of doing that. And it, it was actually a mental reset too of just like, Phew, man, that was a tough day at work. You know, that was a tough day of this. Mm -hmm. Almost by flushing it down the drain, I let it go. And so it was kind of cool that way. So those two things I see, but that's again, free pretty much. You just need a foam roller. Um, and I don't care how you roll. I mean, come up with your own little routine. But, you know, you do that for, I mean, I'm only rolling five, 10 minutes, if that, and the okay. roller's right under my bed. So it's, I see that, I pull it out, do it right into bed. And so again, you make it part of a consistent routine, it's going to stick. Yeah. Yeah. It is all about just getting into the routine. Yeah, of it. It's just a routine. I mean, in, in half the time, again, if, even if it's just a minute or two, at least you're in the routine, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to do a ton. It's, it's more about the routine than anything you know, and just consistently doing it over time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's oh, the best thing for home. Yeah. And again, it's I, so painful. <laughs> I know, but people will, again, there's arguments about that. It doesn't really help with anything. Like it doesn't, and I agree, it doesn't really fix anything. What it does is it just helps blood flow and blood flow is good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Toughens you up too. Well, and again, that's what I tell people too. I was like, don't, you don't have to get crazy on yourself either. Mm -hmm. Don't make it miserable. You don't have to cause, again, type A, 
I'm like, you don't have to beat the crap out of your tissues. Like just get some blood flow going and just get into a little simple routine and it will get easier. And sometimes you will have to work out some issues a little bit more, but um, I used to say foam rolling keeps you healthy, keeps the tissues mobile and it's the intermediary between your massage or body work. Cause everybody can't see me or they can't see a massage therapist. They can't see a PT every, every day or every week, right? They can't afford it time, whatever the foam roll keeps you healthy in between the times when you see your professional, your body work person to get you right. Mm-hmm. And so there that's, that's the connection. It's like connect the dots. It's like yeah. you have a visit here, foam roll until there. And it just kind of keeps going. Love it. So this is something interesting that I learned in part of the, my nutritional therapy practitioner mm-hmm. training. Uh, so on your IT bands, if you have sensitivity and it's, you know, like not an injury or anything mm-hmm. like that, but if they're just tight and they kind of hurt to touch, it can indicate large intestine inflammation mm-hmm. or kind of distress. And so watch people after they foam roll their IT bands, if they immediately have to go to the bathroom and they're in That's there for interesting. a while. I, I could see that though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you think about that too, think about, again, we go back to endurance sports, a lot of large intestinal issues, a lot of sugar intake, mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff. And a, one of the highest rates of injury is IT band tendonitis, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, interesting thing about that's why a foam rolling the IT band, that's the controversial thing that people talk about is, you know, why are you going to mash on something that doesn't have any contractile properties? The IT band doesn't do anything other than sit on your vastus lateralis on your quad, right? And so that's why even just a quick tip out there for IT band stuff, if you're going to roll, roll your entire quad. You don't just, there's no such thing as just rolling your IT band. Your IT band is just, it's like saran wrap and the saran wrap is stuck to your quad. And so your quad is quad, it's four, right? So you got four quadrants, okay? Mm -hmm. We got to, you got to roll them all. You don't just roll the side of your leg, roll your entire leg. Okay. And that's just a good tip for everybody. You can't just roll an IT band. It's going to, it could actually irritate it even more because if you have inflammation down in there and you start grinding on it, you're going to cause issues. So, so when you say roll all side, is that like all sides of your legs? Yeah. Like the front so like of your leg, front. your inner part of your leg, your outer part of your leg, you know, the posterior quad, you know, that kind of wraps around the outer side of it. Roll the entire way. Okay. Roll the entire front, back side of that whole thing. Again, one minute on each section. And you go through there. It's like your calf. One minute, inner part, middle, outer part. One minute, one minute, one minute. And so that's how I do it. I come up with segments of my body and I try to hit the whole, think globally. You've got to think the entire muscle, the entire structure. Um, the biggest thing with quads, especially cyclists, and this is what I found over the years, is that when I was cycling a ton, I wouldn't feel it. But when I would roll my quads out, my whole mental outlook got better. I know that's weird, but they carried so much tension and so much stress that I felt that relaxation in my, I thought better. I was clearer. It was, and it was kind of funny, anything to my neck or shoulders, but I roll the heck out of my quads and I'm like, wow, I'm a happier person. And there's, there's, I mean, they always say that, you know, tension and stuff affects bodies differently, you know, but that was just something for me that I noticed if my quads got worked out, I felt better. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was cool, but I'll look at that, especially the large intestine. I, I, that's interesting. Yeah, and I mean, it's been funny because I've watched people now at the gym, like you're going to do this too, and you see them just like rolling their IT bands, and then they will go to the bathroom. Like, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I got to check that out. You're like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Very cool. That's a good tip. It's a good something, something funny to look for at the gym. Yeah, there you go. Well, Ron, I feel like I could chat with you for a really long time, but we will go ahead and wrap it up to respect your time and everything. So where is the best place for people to find you? So right now, um, our website is recoverwithpurpose.com. You can check it out there. Um, We have uh, our podcast, which is on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. It's on SoundCloud. Um, It's a Recover With Purpose podcast. You can search for it under any of that, under my name. It, we have it listed under everything. Um, we try to put a lot of content out on Instagram and it's recover with purpose is our handle. Those are the best places for content. We're always trying to pump out a bunch of free content for you guys, videos, different things like that. We do have a YouTube channel. Um, we haven't done too much yet with that. We have a lot of videos, but they're still on our Instagram. We're trying to convert over and have a little bit more stuff on YouTube, but mm-hmm. you know, you can kind of get that anyway. We have it on, we have all of our content 
basically um, chained together, daisy chained together. So you can get our blog on our website. You can get our blog posts on Instagram. So if you're in that kind of loop, that those are the kind of things that I'm mainly on is those things. I mean, Facebook, we have our, our site too, but it's under performance medicine and sports therapy on there. Okay. Uh, but, but Instagram and our website are, are big sources of content. So check those out. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Ron. We greatly appreciate it. And I know that people are going to get just tons of value out of this. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks.